Hi, I am going to be starting the presentation on illegal immigration presented by Team Quattro. The title of our presentation is Illegal Immigration, What Impact Does It Have on Our Society and Economy? Our team members are Jason Proctor, Melissa Bartmus, and Shane Lewis. In this presentation, we've been asked to state a problem that we have identified with regard to the number of undocumented immigrants in the United States and the impact that that has on American society and economics. We've also been asked to give evidence that supports our position, to diagnose the sources of the problem, why does it exist, and give evidence that supports that position, to briefly identify two to three potential solutions, to recommend the solution we think is best, and to identify potential barriers to implementing this chosen solution. We will also briefly describe business opportunities that will come from proposed solution. We're going to start with a little bit of history on immigration in the United States. In 1924, Congress passed the Immigration Act of 1924, allowing visas for 2% of the total number of people in each nationality. This established national origin quotas. In 1965, President Lyndon Johnson pushed Congress to change the immigration policy with the Immigration and Naturalization Act. This eliminated the quotas previously presented based on nationality, and instead it favored those with needed skills or who, or who were here joining families that were already in the United States. In 2004, America welcomed 1.3 million new immigrants. This is up from the 1.2 million that that America presented in 2013. Today's percentage of immigrants is similar to that of the 19th century when almost 15% of the U.S. residents were immigrants. They were tailors, stonemasons, shopkeepers, and other skills that were needed by the United States. Those who remain in the States for at least 15 years are no more likely or less likely to be business owners than the native born. Our problem statement is the complex immigration system is broken. Our legislative branch has refused to pass any legitimate immigration reform bill that would be effective in curbing the abundance of an overcrowded population. The American border is porous and our immigration courts are suffering from a lack of judges to move detainees. American culture, society, and economy is threatened unless a system can be put in place and enforced that, count, that curbs these issues and encourages growth through legal documented means. Why is this a problem? One issue is that the detention centers are overcrowded. According to an anonymous subject matter expert during a phone interview, we found that the average wait time for an initial hearing is 18 months. The immigration court is on backlog and there are over 900,000 cases pending in 2019 alone. There aren't enough judges to hear the cases. A negative impact on American society and economy would be the assimilation to American culture. This is promoting a language barrier which hinders aid and prompt response. It also hinders business opportunities, both for the supply and demand. Overwhelming our welfare system, the tax dollars are being used to house and feed undocumented immigrants because they come over here and they are unable to find um, legal adequate jobs that will help them survive, that will pay them enough to survive because they're undocumented, they can't get legal jobs, so a lot of them are paid under the table or um, in which case they aren't paid enough to be able to survive and support their families. So they get on our welfare systems, which the taxpayers pay for. Other potential problems that we have found 
is the continued negative impact that it has on the economy by the overcrowding in the unaccompanied, unaccompanied alien children program. Um, according to our anonymous subject matter expert, the parents are forcing children to cross the border to, for whatever reason, whether it's to um, keep them safe or just give them a better life. Um, but once they get here, we put them in foster homes until they're of age. American taxpayers have to pay um, for these foster homes. And according to the source, it is about $2,000 per child per month. While immigration creates an increase in certain industry demands, in labor, in the labor pool, it also creates an increase in the demand for labor. So as the immigration increases, so does consumer demand, which means more workers are needed to provide goods and services. There's an unclear American immigration code and fraud. The American immigration code leaves much room for interpretation um, when explaining the exceptions for allowing immigrants um, it uses words such as exceptional, special, and hardships, which are very vague words to use and um, covers a, a vast majority of the people. There are many decisions that are inevitably come down to the judgment of individuals, which means they're susceptible to the peculiar psychology of the immigration bureaucracy. It's a quote from Rachel Morris. Visa fraud and overstaying visas has become a huge problem in the United States. Once visas expire, immigrants are not returning to their homeland. They are staying here and there is no kind of tracing or keeping track of them to make sure that they go back to their countries or renew their visas. All right, the solutions that our group looked at was tracking visas, building the building a wall and passing reform and or increasing immigration court judges. So if if the government wants to implement implement a tracking system or just a better one than what they currently use for these illegal immigrants um, or excuse me, immigrants that are coming over on work visas, asylum seeking immigrants, but once their visas expired, if there's a tracking system to be able to find them and then you know we could do something about it whether that's they, they go back to their home country they keep filing an extension or they stay the proper amount of time and they can keep going on the immigration uh, the legalization solution but being able to track them um, some way would help being able to get them like I said either out of this country or just on the next step in the process according to an anonymous source within the office of refugee resettlement excuse me only one percent of the immigrants return home after their visas has expired so the next step we looked at our solution we looked at was building a wall and passing a reform so this the wall might not, might not stop all the traffic coming to the United States because there have been tunnels that they have found with drugs are being carried or tunneled underneath the border into different cities within the United States. So there's still that issue they have, but by building a wall, we will be able to drastically reduce the amount that can come over in unmanned areas in the south the southwest Texas region. And then on into New Mexico and Arizona and California where they're not as manned or they don't have a, a border crossing station. Once, once the immigrant, once the borders have been, you know, sealed off as best they can, then the government can turn to passing more reform to make it a, a more easier system or more effective system for this, the people that are already here seeking um, immigration. Or the illegal immigrants are already in this nation. You know they're already here. It's it would be a lot easier to try to help them become legal citizens, so legal tax-paying citizens, rather than trying to fight and kick them out. Let's reform it and try to to help them get along to be legal tax-paying citizens to help out our country as well, since they are staying here and and more than likely working. 
So um, the, the last one we looked at was increasing immigration court judges. So by increasing the number of judges, they will be able to help try cases and move them along through the court system and help out empty, reducing the number of individuals and immigrants at detention centers. You know, at these detention centers, they're pretty much waiting and talking to an officer and giving their reason why they are seeking asylum within this country um, or why they're being persecuted in their home country and need to seek asylum here in the United States. Now, once a, a judge, or excuse me, once this officer determines that they uh, do not qualify for asylum, they can appeal that to the court judge. But right now, there's 900,000 court cases waiting to be heard with immigration on these asylum seekers. That's also an 18 month waiting period. That turns into citizens that still get into the United States and are waiting. If they get rejected or they just don't show back up to the court, then they're already in the United States and they're gonna go about and do, doing what they can to make a living. Uh, I, I've also heard of some people staying over in towns right across from the border just waiting to be heard. So, you know, more judges will help speed this process along so we can find a solution for the ones that are waiting to hear whether or not they can seek asylum and go on to the next step within the immigration system. The, the solution that we recommended was going to be building a wall and passing reform. To, to us, this made the most sense because until we contain the poorest flow of new illegal immigrants into the United, the United States, the number of pending cases of what to do with illegal immigrants who are already in the United States will just continue to increase. So we must prioritize a solution to flow, the, to, to add some flow restraints um, before even handling the existing immigrants that are in the United States. Otherwise, you're just going to be fighting a losing battle because it's constantly going to be refilling up with undocumented immigrants because they're going to keep on flowing in. So this wall would make it significantly more difficult for illegal immigrants to enter into the country in previously known spots that were uh, relatively easy and unmanned to get into, thus decreasing the success rate of those who will try. Once the wall has been built, there, there's, um, there's going to already be an influx of illegal immigrants constrained within the United States. So this a new system needs to be developed within the U.S. Customs and Immigration Office to determine an individual's immigration status within a shorter time period. That, that's top priority because this, this will reduce the amount of time an illegal immigrant must wait for a resolution regarding his or her immigration status. So our main focus of what we would want to do is you build the wall, you stop the inflow, then you fix the problem that we have because we've you've slowed it down and stopped it so there's not as many coming into the United States so you can focus on helping the ones that are already here or that are already waiting. Some potential barriers to our problem is that this is a divided viewpoint. Um, the border wall is a very, very hot political topic right now within our government. Not everyone agrees with it. Um, and, and in fact, very few, um, excuse me, it is a very, very controversial topic and many, many people are against it. Um, another barrier is unavailable funding. So this wall, it will be expensive, you know, it can be expensive because it's going to be out in the middle of nowhere, fewer resources, you're going to have to haul it out there. Um, so, and then uh, along with um, it being expensive, the President Trump has a hard time getting funding for it. He has attempted to obtain funding in the past to build the wall, um, as well as using other uh reform initiatives, but the House of Representative, Representative has denied and fought him every step of the way. Another potential barrier to this solution is if we stop the flow at the southern border, there could be a potential that the flow would come in from the northern border. So, you know, once that southern border is plugged with a wall, people can then go on around and come in from our northern border. Um, which will then, it, it would take some time to get resources up there to stop the flow. Whether that's building another wall 
working with the Canadian government or just getting border patrol agents back up. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Um, border patrol agents up more more border patrol agents up to the northern border so that they can fight this new front of uh, you know people coming in undocumented people coming into the country some of the business opportunities that would come out of building a new um, wall along with the working redoing the reform immigration reform would be job creation a wall would generate many jobs within along the border um, as this United States looks to to build it. Um, existing construction companies can be worked, could be hired on um, as contractors to help build the wall. You could even work some way where um, you work with some immigrants that want, want to do this. You know, they can, um, they can help work. Um, and I don't want to say cheaper, you know, they should be paired, paid fairly, but, you know, if they might be willing to help work, if, if there's workers needed, um, it could be a solution to help them get, get along and um, help them kind of push through with their, um, their immigration status. It could show them a way that they're willing to work and pay their taxes, pretty much, I guess is the way I look at it. Um, so... You know, you, along with that, you're going to have those jobs that are going to come around to the border towns, which will help generate tax money, uh, spending down in those towns. Revenue will be generated in towns and states um, just from building that border alone. Now, when we look at um, the, the actual immigration reform, you know, a re reform on the immigration could add a, a possible 121,000 more jobs over a 10-year period from the, the study I had looked at, um, or excuse me, the article I had looked at. Along with those job increases, you know, it could provide a boost to the economy. Um, this um, a major revenue boost from these citizens, from these undocumented citizens that used to work for cash. Well, now they're legal citizens with a social security, so they they will be paying their fair and taxes. Yeah, paying their fair share of taxes once they become a legal citizen. So looking at the same study with the jobs earlier, this could be a, a boost of $132 billion within 10 years while also paying $110, excuse me, $109 billion in taxes over that same year period from these illegal immigrants that were helped to be um, made legal citizens a lot quicker from this reform system. So I think, think this could be a big boost to the economy, not only with the border being built, but by taking those illegal immigrants already here and helping them get their citizenship so that, you know, they can be productive citizens within the United States. The, the other thing I read was with the, um, the age discrepancy ratio. Make sure I got, yeah. No, 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 age, excuse me, age dependency ratio. Right now, the, there's going to be a lot of jobs coming up from retirement with the baby boomers. Um, so that's in turn is going to have an age difference of the workforce. By having a easier reform system for illegal immigrants to get their legal status, this will in turn move a younger generation into the workforce, which will help us lower that ratio so that we will have um, more workers to help support the aging senior population in the United States as it continues to get older and people begin to retire and not work as much. Um, so that that's that was our video or that was our presentation. We feel like the best solution to help with this, the immigration is going to be um, building a wall. Um, and, and stopping the flow of immigrants coming into the country and um, making it easier for the existing immigrants to get their legal, uh, their legal citizenship so that they can be productive citizens of the United States. So I want, want to thank you guys for, for watching the video um, and you guys have a good day.